so guys welcome back to my channel once again so you know recently i've been seeing a lot of um, slave trade videos online but decided not to react to them but today i find one that got my attention and this particular one is um, about the Igbo slave trade who resists to be enslaved and rather commit suicide so guys i would want us to watch this video and see for ourselves what our forefathers you know our ancestors passed through you know to be shifted to you know to european countries and the rest of them it's so painful and you know it's just a history though so we can also learn and know our history that's it so let's watch the video together and see what actually happened and what transpired during their own time so let's go ahead guys so in case if this video is muted in future just bear with us you can follow up the video via the subtitle you know the the caption so let's proceed the last time when I filmed this river, I told you it's a clean river with a sad history, but I didn't have much story to tell you about the river. See the big river next to me, and the bridge you're seeing there is the bridge of no return. The story behind that bridge is something very sad, and at the same time, it is something that we don't want to happen ever again. And today, I'm back to tell you the story about this river, but this time around, I have a better story to tell you. I'm not even a slave, but few minutes I spent inside this place. I feel like I was dying. A few months ago, I traveled to Badagri, Lagos, where I explored the Nigerian Slave History Museum. And when I went to this place, I found a story in the museum about Igbo slaves who committed mass suicide in the Atlantic Ocean. And when I saw this story, it brought me back to this river. Inside the ship, they all speak language to themselves. Yeah. Like, instead of us embarking on this journey, why not commit a suicide? Because we don't even know what will happen to us that place. in that place. So they all committed a mass suicide by dropping into the Atlantic Ocean and died there. Here is the story. Some slaves who are from the southeastern part of Nigeria, or you can say the Igbos who were bought by the British, decided to commit mass suicide in 1803. And reason is because they didn't want to go and become a slave in the new world. They were able to carry out this operation because they were speaking their local languages while they were in the ship. They decided to jump into the Atlantic Ocean and committed a mass suicide. This tragic event was a very huge loss for the British who has paid for these slaves. But this is one of the most courageous stories you will hear in Nigerian slave trade history. When I I hear this story, my mind reflected back to where it might have all begun. The Bridge of No Return in Korapase. Most of the slaves from the southeastern part of Nigeria that were bought around that time were transported through this bridge. And this bridge is called the Bridge of No Return for a reason. The reason why this place is called the Bridge of No Return is once a slave step on it, that is the last time they will look back. They will never look back and they will never see their hometown again till they get to the new world that is what it was called but this new world is a world of suffering this bridge of no return is a floating jetty built in 1795 by the europeans for the purpose of conveying slaves into waiting ships this bridge has three major underground holding compartments which were used in storing very stubborn slaves these underground compartments were built to store the maximum of at least 30 people but at any given time over 150 people were stored in each of these compartments making it 450 people stored at any given time in this compartment whereby it was built to contain 90 people as maximum at any given time. These three rooms you see here was actually built to contain 30 people but what you are seeing is each of them contains 50 people at any given time 50 slaves so they are three in each compartment which is 150 slaves and there are three compartments which is 150 times three that is 450 slaves at any given time now take a look at a place where 50 people were sitting imagine and there is no way this is the only source of ventilation this is the only source of ventilation this thing is lying on top of uh, salt water and it's still like this nothing can destroy this thing even in 1000 years to come this thing will remain like this 
But imagine the kind of suffer the whole people that are inside this place who are suffering. Imagine 50 people inside here. I wanted to know what it feels like inside this compartment where the very stubborn slaves were stored. I entered inside. I was only there for 10 minutes and I couldn't stand it. I'm not even a slave, but few minutes I spent inside this place, I feel like I was dying. And imagine 50 people inside there, 50 people inside there, and another 50 people inside there. The same thing goes to this place. 50 people here, 50 people in the middle. Just imagine how these people suffered right here. There is something interesting. A basketball coach in America named Hime Udoka have traced back his ancestry to this place. And he is actually... Sorry guys for cutting this video short. So I wanted to react to something he just said right now. Let's just assume that this particular thing was happening in this our presence. Do you think that with the nature of our body and what we eat currently and the way we do things right now, do you think uh, you know this present time that we can survive this thing that our ancestors actually survived during their whole time? And you already know my answer to this question. The answer is no, we can't. In short, most of us would have died. All, almost all of the, all of us would have died, and you know, <laughs> and they will stop talking about us. But let's continue watching the video, though. Actually, from Ikorobas, which is the people who were taken from this place, Ibe Udoka. You can search about it and find out. So he is actually from this Ikorobas. While I was coming out from this slave compartment, the only thing that was going through my head is who would not be suicidal if they were made to go through this barbaric situation? Hundreds of years have crossed and the only thing we can do is to imagine what these people went through. We can never really feel exactly how they felt. So it is understandable that these people were suicidal and they decided to end it all in the Atlantic Ocean instead of going to the new world which they never knew what they would expect. What you're seeing here, like many places many slave uh, trade museums you will go you will see things like this this is actually used to write names on slave you know when during the slaves slave time slaves doesn't have name any slave you see is bearing either the name of the owner or the name the owner wants it to bear so when the when somebody buys a slave they use this thing to write the name of the owner of the slave on their skin and that will be their name forever. That's why you see people who are from Africa that are in America and their name are Brown, White, uh, Dixon. All those names are the names of the slave owners that was written on their skin using this thing. And this is one of the chains that was used during the slave trade over 400, and 400 years ago and the chain is still here and it's have rusted that is why you see it at this size but these things can actually be on the neck or on the leg or on the hands of a slave for how many months during their travel from the Atlantic Ocean to wherever destination they are going to these are all the things slaves suffered and this Ikora Basi was one of the places a very prominent place during the slave trade and most of the uh, be, most of the slaves from the eastern Nigeria was taken from this bridge of no return. Glory be to God that today we are able to go to the top of this bridge, even enter the prison and we return. And that is because we are free and we are free indeed. I want to use this opportunity to tell you about Akwaibom. Akwaibom is a state in South South Nigeria with a lot of tourist destination that no many people know about. Only Ikorabasi has a lot of things to show you, like the first British Bank of Nigeria, which I have made a video about. If you want to watch the video please check few videos i posted before this one in this semi Abase, we have the amalgamation house 1914 which is where the country nigeria was amalgamated over 100 years ago in this ikorabase we have the lord lugat house which was the first colonial president of nigeria in this semi Abase, we have the women war memorial which i will make a special video telling you about the history this is just ikorabase but that's not the only thing you will find in our kwaibom state there is ibono beach which is the longest sand beach in the whole west africa they also sorry guys i'm cutting it short so this is where i'm gonna be ending this video if you wish to watch some of this video again you can go to wow nature's channel and you know continue with other videos and uh, the one thing i want to chip in in this is that we all need to you know go back to history know much about all this thing is our history we have to know it and know where our ancestors did wrong and 
try to correct it and also emulate the ones they have done right and you know implement it in our own days right now so this is all i have for you guys today don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you love what we are doing and don't also forget to click on the thumb up button and don't also forget to click on the notification bell so you get notified each time we publish a new video and lastly don't forget to share thank you guys for watching have a lovely day peace out